Hello, folks. I'm Mal, and I'm here with my buddy Hadrian. What's going on, Hadrian? Hey, everyone. I'm doing fine. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. So I guess today we're going to talk about um, Early Access 6. Because it just came out. It did just come out. It just came out today, uh, which is, for point of reference, July 21st? Yes. Which yes, is indeed. weird, because, I mean, maybe I'm just not remembering this correctly. Don't they normally release on Fridays? True. True. Yeah, I don't know like that they, they've ever had like that much regularity, but maybe by sheer coincidence, most they of their just stuff comes to get out. pushed out on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. Or they, they they dedicate a work week to finishing it up, so it happens to come out on a Friday. That's probably what happened. Could have been. So they yeah. might have been able to push this one out a little sooner, which could be a good sign. Could be a bad thing. We'll see. We've got patch notes to go over. <laughs> yeah, we and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about um, today, folks. Um, but yeah, we, we want to bear in mind that some stuff we can show you. And some stuff we can't because a lot of it is. As a matter of fact, I'd say the bulk of it is. I, I guess we classify as under the hood, right? Right. So I. Think and that's I'm, how they would describe it. I think I, I believe I saw a developer or two describing it that way uh, when the patch notes were were released. I mean, it's it's stuff that. I mean, as we mentioned, um, or as we will mention, because you haven't seen this episode yet, um, some of these changes did creep in um, to the final episode of um, Metal and Stone. And Millet Stone. Millet Stone. <laughs> hey, we, we said we we're going to say it one more time. I thought we were done saying it, but we got to say it one more time. One more time. One more um, time. So some of the changes crept in, and, you know, we observed that they were more visible, perhaps, than some of the under the hood changes that were in Early Access 5 and Early Access 4, because they've been changing a lot. But as we've discussed in previous videos, you know, there's this there's this tone among certain constituents in the community that's just like, oh, nothing's changing. But it's just it's just because everything's been so deep under the hood. They've been making changes to the way the AI behaves. They've been making changes to the way the base mechanics of the game run to make everything run um, in a more uh, complex and uh, interesting way from a strategic point of view. And so now one of the really cool things about this patch is it's still under the hood. But I really think that the changes from what I've seen are closer to the surface to where you can see things more. There, there are some refinements to the AI or the AI, the UI, which yeah. we're going to go over, yeah, absolutely. Uh, which look really nice. And of course, other things as well. But but just lots of things that you can see that are improvements that will make you go, oh, wow, this is cool. And it's really kind of sparked a renewed interest in really chasing down all of the the new features which yeah, i think I is think, a positive I thing i think it's, i think it's interesting that most of the the bulk of the patch notes are about the the different like you were talking about the different changes to the ai which we're going to go over in some detail as we go through this but the ui refinements and subtle there's a lot of more subtle changes but it just looks i, I think the word i came up with when i was thinking about this earlier is that it's polished like yes. you could you could see that we're close to retail release. You got me release. excited for a second, though, dude. I thought you were literally going to come up with a new word. No, I thought no, you were going to no, add something no, to no, the dictionary no, to describe no, no. this new patch. No, of no, I'm just, I'm just going with polish. Let's go with polish. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hey, let's jump in with just we're sitting here on the on the the multiplayer screen because we wanted yep. to talk about the new game pays feature, and so yeah, this is I think for you and I, we kind of found the settings that we liked. Yes, um, we already tweaked this stuff down on the bottom. Yeah, but now if you if you want to, you know, sort of if you're a, just not a quick one of those people. Yeah. yeah, if you're not one of those people and you just like, OK, I want a really fast game and you can click lightning and it'll automatically yes. change to fast, fast, very fast. Or you can go quick. Yeah. Heroic, so on and so forth. You can click on the game pace and it'll change it below. Yeah. Um, and actually come to think of it, you know, if, if you want to think of a quick, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, a quick parallel. Um, I have mentioned in a lot of my Master of Orion content that one of the reasons this game is so easy to pick up is one game that mo most of us in our corner of the market, whether you're a Let's Player or not, have played is Civilization. Actually, Civilization V, the most recent one. And there are some um, mechanics that I think Master of Orion very lovingly borrows um, and does it well. And this is actually another one of those. In Civ V, you have game difficulty, right? As you do here in Master of Orion, but you also have game speed. And those things have already been there. There's been research speed and there's production speed, which I have also noted is actually not customizable in Civilization V. And I hope they do have that customizable in Civilization VI later this year. But so th those settings have already been there, but this actually allows you, like Mal was saying, to just change a setting and say, I want a quick game, I want a normal pace game, which is classic, or I want a game that takes a really long time, which would be the equivalent of something like Marathon or Epic, for those of you who have played Civilization V. So if you've never played Civilization, what I'm talking is complete hogwash, but the point is, it's 
a really easy way to just quickly change the pacing of the game without having to tweak the advanced settings if you're not that type of player, which is nice. And maybe I'm just spacing this out, but wasn't it slow, normal, fast? Because I don't remember very slow or very fast. Those are new settings. I guess so. Yeah. You, since you're hosting the game right now, I'm at the mercy of what of what you want to tweak. But uh, you say the, the options are slow, normal and well, fast it, for difficulty. It's now it's very slow, slow, normal, fast and very fast. So there's five categories that you can tweak under advanced settings now. Oh, under advanced settings. For a second, I, I don't know why I was thinking you were talking about difficulty, but okay, that that actually is different. It, they, it was slow, normal, fast, because I remember us talking in, in those specific dimensions. Just and it looks three. like they added under difficulty, there's now a very easy, so it scales from very easy to extreme, which you and I play on. Okay, that actually makes sense to have that five-point difficulty scale. I like that. That's pretty slick. Yeah, I like yeah. that. All right. Well, I tell you what, folks, we're going to we're going to um, make a quick cut here in the video so that we can actually load into the game and then we'll come back to you on the other side. And we're going to show you some of the UI changes and, and other things that we have discovered that we think are are kind of neat along the way. OK, so we'll see you in just a second. OK, folks, so we're all loaded in. We're back and we're not going to go through every bit of the patch notes. We're just going to kind of go through uh, what we believe are the most impactful things that we've seen. And just based on our experience of playing um, Massive Orion, which both of us have played quite a bit of it, we can kind of anticipate what some of these changes are going to be to gameplay. Um, there'll be, there's a lot of obvious uh, UI changes, and some of them are a little bit subtle. Yeah. Um, but Hadrian, why don't you start us subtle, off with that? But just beautiful. Yeah, why don't you start us off with just a discussion <laughs> about the UI changes? Because I'm so excited about it. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, the most obvious when I mentioned how things are, are have th there's been an extra layer of polish added. And one of the things that you can see immediately, one of the kind of under the hood changes that is visible is you've got just so much going on as far as just the, 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 the UI itself. You know, the buttons have been polished to look a little bit more. I'm not going to say three dimensional, but they just had a little bit more character added to them, a little bit more highlight um, to where they look more polished, more like you would expect from a released version of a game. But when you go into, say, your Empire screen now, right now, I just have one planet, so I can't really show you how much more has been added to this. But, you know, those little icons that pop up uh, over your individual planets, not in this screen, but in the actual game map, when you have like pollution on a planet or like if the pollution is so bad that the pop, that the uh, biome is about to degrade, well, now there is a little icon that actually shows here next to each world to discuss or to point out to you that that change is about to happen. Like, or that like you, you have could sort like the same icon that you can use to sort uh, by pollution. A smaller mm -hmm. version of that will appear, like Hadrian is saying, right next to the planet. It'll also yep. show you um, uh, people that are on strike. It'll show you um, mm -hmm. assimilation. It'll show you the number of uh, units that It'll are... It'll show you famine. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yep. All status effects. Yep. There's just so much more over the past couple of patches, really. But particularly in this patch, I feel like this the Empire screen has gained a lot. Have we have we poked into the research screen yet? Have they changed the anything they, here? They changed, they changed some icons. Like, as an example, one of them that they changed was... For the computer upgrades, they changed the icon for that. There was some other... Yeah, these look different. Yeah, there was some other icon changes. I don't think they changed any... I didn't see any obvious placement changes. Just just the icons. Some of the icons look different and cleaner. Yes, I, I don't... everything for the most part looks like the same tech tree. Yeah, you know, and actually, you know, we'll get back to UI in just a second. I wish that they had... Uh, moved some of the things around. Like, as an example, I still don't understand why planetary supercomputer... I mean, you're at you're at a tech victory by the time you get to this tech. Like, I don't even... You know, plus 25 research, system unique. By the time you get this, I don't understand what the point is having it this far in the tree. Remind me where it is, because I'm not even sure. If you go to the very end of the tech tree, you've got evolving technologies. You go back one from planar, transis, uh, planar trans, uh, transistance... Transcendence. Uh -huh. There we go. I could say it. And yeah. then under artificial yeah. consciousness is where planetary supercomputer is. I, Got it. I, I yeah. really think that that should be back like at least a tier or two. Otherwise, what's the yeah, point? Yeah, I mean, uh, that big of a research bonus is pointless when you only have three technologies after that column to be done. So that's a good point. And that, that hasn't moved in, in a number of patches. But hey, you know, that's <laughs> that's something they can they can tweak. I mean, we're, we've got plenty of, of positive changes aside from that. 
Um, just one that makes me scratch my head. Looking I'm like, amazing. You know. <laughs> In terms of the polish, it's just there. A little bit. Well, I think probably too, because in previous iterations of the game, that tech mm -hmm. was way earlier in the tree. So it's just sort of like the that's the Mu Two in me. That's the Mu Two guy in me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just that bugs oh, yeah. me. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it look, it's looking just in general. Getting back to the UI, you're right. It's looking pretty slick. Yes. And when you uh, you talked about the buttons, like when you click on your fleet and whatnot, did you notice too that just that that whole fleet box now is there's like a transparency there you can like see through oh, yeah, to the galaxy it. I yeah i like it i like that That's a lot nice. yep just subtle little changes to make the game as pretty as you would expect a 2016 you know space 4x like this to to be it's it, it's got everything you need it's 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 starting to get everything you need anyway it looks awesome the examiners delve through the mysteries as blueprints also Forgot about this. So they've changed ship design to blueprints. Are you looking at this too, Mal? I am looking at it. And there's a awesome. button, since we don't have any new tech, because this is a fresh game. <laughs> of course not. Underneath where it says upgrade, there's actually another button mm -hmm. that will appear. And yep. that's upgrade it's all. It's beautiful. It's really it slick. It makes me so happy. Um, matter of fact, I'll try to insert a screenshot here if I can. But it, it's really slick. And at least in the couple of tests that I did on, a, on another save game... It, is it is it me or does it seem like it's smarter about applying like like it was already improved yes. in EA five in terms of like preserving your design but it seems like in EA six it does an even better job when you do the upgrade all it upgrades yeah, all your ship well, designs and seems to keep them sort of like how you wanted them yeah well just for example I mean this is not something we can literally show on the screen because we weren't recording at the time but before we recorded the very last episode of Metal and Stone <coughs> Metal and Stone, Metal and yeah, Stone. That, one. Um, that was that was not planned <laughs> um, before we recorded that we actually we were playing around with the new AI and we did go ahead and hit the upgrade all buttons before we were recording before we even realized that we wouldn't be able to keep going with the series uh, which spoiler alert <laughs> yeah that's gonna happen oops um so it was oops. basically done it was basically done yeah. Yeah. so you'll, you, see you'll, you'll see this you'll see it we, we you'll still, see this we video and then it. so we have many metal and stone videos to come but wait don't worry don't worry it, it, yeah. it it's clear the outcome we're, we're, we're yeah. okay we don't want to spoil it for you it's good i'm not yeah. i'm it's not a, i'm it's not a saying, fun ending too guys it's yeah. a fun ending too i'm not but saying anyway, whether we won um, or not but i will say it, it's so fun before we recorded the last episode of that um, we were playing around with it and we, we, we hit the upgrade all button and there was an immediately noticeable uptick in all of our ships, uh, particularly offensive power. Did you see that it was mostly in offense or was it also in, in defense, Mel? Uh, it was, no, it was mostly in offense. And like I said, though, it wasn't overriding a lot of times when you have multiple upgrades, it'll just, even though in EA five, it sort of preserved your design in EA six. The, the you know just kind of playing around with it a little bit it seemed like it did a better job of saying oh okay he he really wanted to keep those graviton cannons so we'll we'll right. keep those and then if there's extra space we'll add in some other stuff but like it didn't like as an example here's a smart here here's here's something i noticed so instead of replacing like mass drivers um that are point defense with laser cannons which once you have laser cannon modification tech it would just right. overwrite mass drivers and you're like no 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 i still want my mass no. <laughs> drivers because they're shield piercing and they don't have range dissipation let right. me keep them but it would overwrite them because the the damage per second on the laser cannons was better once you had the modification so the game was seeing that as better in the reality conditionally it's not uh they're not right. better than mass drivers so the fact that it didn't overwrite them that was the first time it didn't um yeah. tells Which me was that really they, nice yeah that's a nice like just refinement change that they made in ea6 Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it, it was awesome to see. And I, I bring this up because, again, those of you who have watched my Terrible Terran series, and this might have happened in some of your series too, I, maybe not because you don't auto-upgrade as much as I do. I like you, I, I think you, you like to, uh, uh, you know, do your manual upgrades a little bit more. But in the Terrible Terran series, um, the upgrade actually dramatically nerfed my Titans of all ships. Like, they were, they were miserable. I haven't fought a battle with them where it were, where I was just sitting there watching them like plink at a starbase with incredibly inferior weapons, and I was like, "Are you, are you freaking kidding me?" So this is something that I feel like will completely reverse that, um, and the, the upgrading is going to be a lot smarter going forward, which is just a great change to have. They also made um, some changes to battle pods, so yeah, it still gives you plus fifty percent additional space, but the cost associated with it. Um, 
it changes by ship class, whereas it used to it used to just scale through the same for all of them. So basically, mm -hmm. what it, the way it plays out game impact wise, because, you know, in, in my Let's Play and even in our Let's Plays together, we kind of beelined it to Battle Pots because it's a huge upgrade, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, so it's definitely good and it's still good. However, for like frigates and destroyers, it, it doesn't provide, for lack of a better way to say it, it doesn't provide the same economy of scale. So right. li like it, it costs so much to put them in that it's not really worth it anymore on frigates or destroyers. And it's really designed more for like cruiser classes and up, which makes sense. That's a good change. Um, right. You know, other kind of gameplay mechanic changes. They lower the cost of terraforming to the next level. You and I actually just talked about that during the Metal and Stone series. We were talking about how you terraform a planet and if it's barren, you might as well just leave it that way, because by the time you're done, getting it to like a Terran biome, you've spent so much production. Right. It just wasn't worth it to terraform. It was like a pointless tech. Right. Those are smart gameplay changes, in my opinion. Yes. And again, they're 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 still kind of, as the devs have said, under the hood, but that's a much more obvious positive change than some of the stuff we've seen. And I'm not saying there haven't been obvious positive changes, but I, again, there's been this this undertow among some people in the community of just like, oh, I can't can't tell the difference. But this is where you're really starting to see some of the work that they've been doing with early access four and five building up. And now we've got these awesome differences compared to, say, early access three. Well, or even in just like quality of life. Like if you right now, I'm I'm uh, zeroing in on the one colony I have, right? The, the uh -huh. capital. So it's a star over the top, which indicates that it's a, you know, a capital. And then right, right next to it, um, there's like a little cross. I mean, it's not a cross, but it, it kind of looks like a cross. Mm -hmm. um, and that indicates that there's a starbase present, which is great because before you'd have to like cycle. Once you had a bunch of colonies, you'd have to cycle through and you'd be like, OK, does this place have a starbase? Does this place have a starbase? Especially when you're like hungry for more um, command points and you're like, oh, I need another right. starbase. Where can I build that? There was no real quick way other than cycling through all of your colonies and looking at the actual like you know planet level details um to find right. it there was no visual cue so now that I mean, those are really small little changes that make i think a big impact and hey i just noticed something else this is a this is another graphical change but uh and i actually have never ever once until right now until this moment played as the uh as the cylon uh, I played against them multiple, multiple, multiple times, but because I haven't played as them, I'm not familiar with their, um, with their uh, bonuses. They have a research bonus, though, don't they? They do. Yep. So here's something that's kind of cool, and this might have already been there. So this might not, this might actually not actually be new, but you're there's a little, um, I, but they've had a lot of background effects, so I feel like this is probably new. Um, the scientists have this little. Uh, this little blue effect behind them to show that they're generating extra research in addition to the two plus research, which probably has been there um, because of their bonus. Has that been there already? How I just missed over that? No, I think that that's new. And when you hover yep. over the, the population now, it, it also lists if you've got some kind of detriment, like an example, because I just fired up as the, the Darlock racial trait minus two. Yep. So total output two. that's all I'm getting from this particular fellow and if i hover over uh population if i hover over um any of these cells i can actually get details which is pretty cool yeah well maybe i don't know like I, i'll need to look at the cylon <laughs> i might be making a fool of myself right now with because i haven't played with the cylon but like if i'm looking at the 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 cylon well but uh, is that a bonus uh, traits. Is, I, I wonder if that highlight is because of that or because you have artifacts homeworld it's, it's that. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, I feel like it's it's just because it might not be a Cylon research bonus per se. But anyway, the point is there's an effect. Yeah. There's an effect to demonstrate. Um, you, you can just see, oh, yeah, on this planet in particular, we're getting a research bonus, which is nice. Now, I'm looking at I'm, I've been, I'm looking over some of the, the other notes. Let's see. Uh, I was thinking we could talk about AI next because there's a there's a chunk there's a, of AI. Yeah, there's a chunk of stuff. Go ahead. That's something we're really passionate about is having a smart AI. So I think people watching might just be more likely to want to hear that from us um, than the average uh, than the average Master of Orion player. Um, do you want to go over some of those? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the so some of the things that Hadrian's is talking about is that the AI is supposed to make smarter decisions in terms of not only diplomacy and how it deploys itself, but in particular when it comes to 
uh, which planet it's going to take. And we saw a little bit of that in EA5 after the last hot patch, which I would kind of yep. consider like early access five and a half. That <laughs> was basically <laughs> what it was. Yeah, I mean, really, that's what it right. was. Um, so it was already making smarter choices, but they made some additional uh, changes to the way the AI looks at the galaxy map and selects its colonies. And it's supposed to still be very territorial. And speaking of territorial, now when you fire up a new game, the AI... <laughs> I, I, well, this remains to be seen whether or not this is good for people like us that play on the higher oh, difficulty. Oh god, I'm so scared about this. They, they automatically will spawn the <laughs> AI that's most likely to be hostile to your empire right next to you on the galaxy map. So you're gonna Brutal. have yeah, you're gonna have Brutal. threat right in your face right off the bat. I don't I don't know. What do you think about that change? Every time. Yeah. Uh, well, I honestly like it's brutal and it's scary and i think it'll definitely for those of those of us who want to challenge i think it'll be good i think i don't know that i'm a huge fan of it being uh compulsory where it happens every single time and it's just automatic i um, think you I should think, i think there should be a flag for that yes there should be a setting uh because look a lot of the times you know when i started doing youtube i automatically realize okay well when we do these let's plays there's this there's this desire like of course you want it to be entertaining but also like because you're paying so much attention to every decision you're making because you're having to describe it for the most part you start to put more energy into the game and there's this there's this natural desire for a higher difficulty setting that definitely happened to me and so i mean i totally do enjoy the challenge particularly because i do youtube videos but at the same time before youtube a lot of the times when i would play strategy games and i know a lot of the people out there are this way I actually wouldn't play on really high challenge because when I would play strategy games, I would play for like the narrative and I would play for the story and I would play for the experience of establishing these empires. And sometimes I didn't want it to be really hard. I didn't want it to be super challenging. And it, at the very least, I wanted to have control over it so that when I wanted the challenge, I could have it. Sure. So that's something that I think... I hope, like you say, I hope they have a flag in the future because I think there's some people listening right now that are going like, hell yeah, Hadrian, thank you for saying that because a lot of people do occasionally just want to chill and have a more relaxed experience. And if it's automatically going to put a really challenging opponent, even when you have the difficulty set to lower next to you every time, that could that could ruffle some feathers. Yeah, wrong, so but. no, no, I think I think I like it that it's there. I agree with you. I don't. I don't want it to be compulsory. I want. I, I want. I, hopefully, they'll they'll add the option, and we certainly can give that feedback. Not that they'll necessarily listen to us, but we can certainly try, right? <laughs> um, I mean, I've been we can begging and screaming through. I, I mean, I mean, I've been begging for ship veterancy and you know colony leaders and ship leaders, and I I don't know that those will make it. Yeah. Uh, at least not immediately. I don't think that'll make it into the game. But it it really seems to me, based on conversations that uh, we've had with the devs, that. You know, we are getting closer to release and, and you know, when that's going to yep. be exactly, we're not sure. But they already have plans for, for post-release and, uh, you know, more improvements and more patches. And then yep. at some point, some DLC. But I like the fact that at least what they're saying now is that they're going to continue to improve uh, the game based on feedback they get from, from everyone. Um, and they're not... You know, like I don't, I don't anticipate now. Uh, somebody might come back screaming at me later about this, but I don't anticipate any kind of like day one DLC shenanigans. I don't see this developer doing that. Well, speaking of DLC, I was actually about to say, did you notice what they've done with DLC today? Have you looked at Master Orion on the store page? I didn't. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, actually, some of you listening might have seen this already, but let me educate you, sir. When you go to the store page on Steam for Master Orion, the Terran Conant. And the pixelated ships, the classic ships option that's been in here since the beginning of early access, yeah. are now DLCs. Now for us, because we're early access customers, as are the rest of the players that are watching this, assuming you own the game if you're watching this, which not all of you do, um, for those of you who, who have been playing early access, we already have those DLCs. They, they are showing as already installed, but they are showing as separate broken out DLCs now. So How much whether is the Terran Conate, one, though? I didn't look at the prices. That's the one thing I don't know. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't know whether they're that, priced I think, DLC I, or what, but yeah, they are I think, definitely I think that building makes into sense DLC because the we and we don't know what the price point is yet either. But uh no, no, no. I know that the price point for the non for the retail version, for the non early access version, is actually gonna be lower than what you and I paid to get into this. Um Bastards. You know, Yeah, right. How dare they um <laughs> how dare they monetize the thing they made. Uh, but uh, so, I'm so just I don't kidding, really, all I love you. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any problem with that because we got it right because we were in the early access and paid for that. So I'm. I'm actually okay oh, with phenomenal. that. 
I'm okay with that. Totally okay um, with that. Yeah, me too. But uh, I'm talking about like additional content day one DLC. I don't think we're going to see that stuff. Right, right, yeah. right. I just wanted to make sure that that was addressed because, I mean, I think it's cool to see the DLC model already starting to develop and kind of seeing some of the stuff that, you know, might be DLC, whether it's paid or not, you know, um, is accessible to the early access customers. Right? That makes, makes you feel like we've, uh, like you said, that we, we've paid for it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, which is good. In terms of the other um, AI changes, the the AI is supposed to make smarter choices now too about what it's doing when it goes to a state of war. Like, it's not as an example. You're not the AI is not supposed to have planets working on terraforming when they're at war, which it would do right. before. Which actually for you and I is going to have some interesting implications because it's not like the AI on extreme didn't already have like a ridiculous sort of war machine in terms of cranking out ships so that right. that that one line there has got me worried about you know that balance i'm a little I'm, I'm a little i'm a little bit scared about that i'm just saying <laughs> yeah i mean they, they've made a, a couple of behavior changes one of the ones i think this is the one they mentioned on twitter and i actually asked them about it because this is another thing that i would hope uh would have some variance if not in this patch uh down the line but the ai now focuses on colony expansion in their early stages before they start to really sink um population into research so they're going to try uh, i i'm assuming that means I, I don't know actually looking at this note now now i'm curious because they say colony expansion so that could refer both to establishing new colonies which makes sense for the ai to do early on they branch out and and they colonize but also colony expansion could refer to having population in food as opposed to research, letting the um, letting the colonies grow themselves. So there's micro and macro expansion. So I'm actually kind of wondering any more insight on like what that's what that note is specifically referring to for people. You know, I, I don't we'll just have to play and see. And we've only yeah. had hands on for a limited amount of time. Right. But right. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. I, I want to see what the impact is to the first 50 turns. And right. right now, I don't know what I don't know. Um, but I would suspect that that means the possibility that you would have less aggression in the first 50 turns. Because because as it stood before EA6, you know, you saw your first wars, you know, your first declaration of wars would break out before, before turn 65. And yes. now I'm thinking with these AI changes, we may... As long as you don't encroach on their territory, we may not yeah. see that. Like maybe it'll go back to the way it was before where you really didn't see that first serious aggression until like turn 100. That's what I think. Right. But again, this is just me theorizing. Right. And then the other things that they changed, they did some they did a balance pass to they they changed the way shield and armor scales. Um mm -hmm. They changed uh, the Alcare, they rebalanced them so they would build heavier ships. They changed the Guardian. Uh, they made the Guardian weaker. What? Yeah, they made the Guardian weaker, which actually is a huge gameplay uh, change, potentially, because now... Um, Could be more accessible to the AI. Well, th yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. But also, on the flip side, um, it might also mean that, you, you know, the, the there used to be an old strat for Master Variant 2 where you would get certain special weapons and you would go after the Guardian, like, like at the mid-game. And if you got that, then you got the win, like the Guardian Rush. But maybe now Guardian Rush will be plausible in this version of Master of Ryan. It looks like maybe that might be the case. Maybe so. And then they've continued. I don't ever play with pirates because I think they're stupid, but uh, that's my technical <laughs> analysis of it. Right. Um, but they've continued to change um, the pirates. Um, now it's directly connected to difficulty and they're they're not supposed to totally screw over the AI, um, which is the reason why I didn't play with them, because the pirates, a lot of times, beyond being a nuisance to the human player, ah. more often was a help to the human player, because they would, they could dang near destroy an AI in the early game, because the pirates weren't balanced right. Um, that's why I never wanted to use them. So, are you saying you might try pirates in a future Let's Play? I, I might. I might. Who knows? <laughs> I, I, you know, I've played, I've played with them. I've played with them enough, not recording to know that I didn't want them in a, in the, in the gameplay. But when I do some more test runs, I, I may very well enable them and just play through like the first hundred turns. And I want to, I'm going to do a couple of runs, um, to, to up to a hundred turns just to see what the implication is of these AI changes. And I'm going to try 
privately anyway to play as the Darlocks because I've tried mm -hmm. a couple I, try, I tried a couple of times on EA5 on extreme to play the Darlocks to victory and I didn't record it and it was uh, let's just say it was painful <laughs> yeah painful the playing them. to go for yeah Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've, I've heard that from multiple people, including commenters on YouTube and just people I've interacted with on social media. So hopefully uh, that's something that will um, will be a little bit different in EA6. Is there a particular change that you're thinking uh, will really help them with that? I mean, I know I, they, they, I know like spies I think it, or something that they're going to continue to improve. So that's going to affect the Darlock down the line. But Right. Yeah, no, they'll be, I, I know for a fact that they've got some other things planned, but I'm not at liberty to say details. Mm. But um you know, I, I think that if, and again, I'm theorizing, but if early aggression changes from turn 60, 65 to back to turn 100, which mm -hmm. I think with these changes, that might be the case. But again, I need to test it. But if that happens, then the Darlocks maybe do have a chance on higher difficulties. The reason they don't have any chance right now is because they have no infrastructure um, bonuses, right? They don't have any additional production. They don't have any additional research or growth. So they're kind of screwed right. out of the gate. And their advantages come from the behind the scenes manipulation they can do. So yeah. if you can get a spy center early enough with them by like, say, turn 45 and get the first few spies done, you make contacts with other races. And if they don't declare war on you because of the way the AI's mentality has changed, mm -hmm. then you'll have an opportunity, hopefully, to get your first round of uh, espionage missions complete. And maybe you can get the the other AIs to go to war with each other. Like if you could buy turn 100, if you could be the one that orchestrates the wars, then the Darlocks have a chance. If that's not still in there, if that's not balanced, then, you know, it's still going to be a useless race to play. Right. So I'm noticing that we are approaching the 30 minute mark for this video. Let's take a look at some of the other really big things that we might not have covered yet. There is one thing I want to mention really quick um, before we, before we jump into some of the stuff that uh, we can maybe wrap up with um in covering you know the the content of this uh, latest patch in master of orion but uh have you noticed that there's now a uh the confirmation for declaring war well they put that in <laughs> they, they put that in that was called the hadrian button <laughs> they put that in specifically yeah, for you you right, don't think yeah. it's a good i mean maybe it's just a coincidence maybe it's right. just a coincidence that right. they put that in declaration of war confirmation maybe it is but i, I think it's funny a day after I you try to destroy me in our multiplayer Oh, yeah. right. they're, they're like, hey, maybe we need that confirmation button because of Hadrian's quick on the draw there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even quick on the draw. I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, I'm just going to click this button. Oh, This we're button looks good. Let's go yeah. to war, Mal. I was like, ah, <laughs> which everybody wants us to for whatever reason. Yeah, it wouldn't work in a Let's Play. Wouldn't work. Stop asking. <laughs> Why don't you do it? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything. I mean, well, there's other cool stuff like they're putting in. They've put yes, in achievements. Really there's new cutscenes for the ending. I mean, there's lots of other cool stuff, yes. but I don't see any other really big things. And if and if you want to look at the the patch notes, there'll be a link in the description below these yeah, videos be where you can both the descriptions, go look yeah. at these. You know, at you know, in depth. Where, you know, the yes. idea of this is to have a discussion about this, not to regurgitate every line. Yeah, and I really, I mean, depending on what. I mean, the, the, the patch notes are broken up into sections, too. So it's not like you're just reading a bunch of bullet points. Don't get me wrong. It's a bunch of bullet points. But if you are the kind of person like uh, like Mal and me that like that is interested in, in AI changes in particular, there's an AI section. We are reading heavily from that one. But also, if you are the kind of person who like really likes these games to look polished and refined, there's a whole section. And there are things we did not talk about that, that are really good. UI changes, user interface changes that you're going to want to see. Um, I, I talked about some of the most obvious ones, like the way the, the, the buttons look, but look at these patch notes and really digest it. Um, I think you mentioned uh, one of my favorite um, changes that we're not going to be able to show in this video because it's there specifically for victory. But they've added more cutscenes, which I really do hope they continue to add more and more cutscenes down the line. Uh, maybe hopefully there'll be more in the release version as well. But the cutscenes in this game are one of my favorite things about Master of Orion when you colonize a planet. But now there are cutscenes, as Mal mentioned, when you win the game for certain victory types. It's not for all victory types, because I imagine they're still going to do some different cutscenes for all the victory types going forward. But for instance, when you 
conquer the galaxy as a particular race, you'll see a victory cutscene for that race winning the game uh, with a conquest that's, victory. That's which really is that's really cool, you know, to have that like positive reinforcement for yeah. for winning. Um, and I have to tell you, you, just want. to just to contrast this against Stellaris, which is a game that I keep trying to get you to play. Um, <laughs> I, the, I own it. I, whoa, 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 I know, 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 whoa, I know. Hold on, I would love. Love. I just want to set the record straight so that people here in this notes. I would love to play Stellaris. I've been wanting to for a long time. The issue is fitting it into my channel schedule. Okay, continue. Go. All right. <laughs> but people are gonna say make room. They're gonna say make room for Stellaris. <laughs> I well, can't. Now, make now, here's room. the thing. I like. I I really like Stellaris, and I had just finished my first uh, playthrough like a week or so ago. And again, for point of reference, this is sort of the middle third week or so of July of 2016. And I had just finished, finished my first playthrough and I get to the end. It was like 55 episodes. I'm like super excited to see the end, right? Cause this is a great game. It's got to have a cool cutscene, And then it's just like an in-game summary, like with some numbers right. on it and no cutscene. And I was like, what? Yeah. And, and it was kind of echoed. That's paradox for you. It was kind of echoed. It's kind of echoed in the comments too. Like, wow, they really need to, you know. So I, I, th- I, th- I thought it was really cool. Like, because people constantly contrast these two games because they're space strategy games coming out at roughly the same time, even though mm. they are very different games. Yeah. But when I saw that they added the cutscenes. Yeah. When I, when they added the cutscenes for this, though, I thought, oh, okay, that was a smart move. You know. Yep. Definitely a smart move, and it helps. It helps set it apart. I mean, it's it's another reason. To, I mean, like you said, I think the game should be differentiated a little bit. I think it's a shame that people people compare them because they're so different. Grand Strategy is its own baby, particularly when you're talking about Paradox. Good God. Well, I yeah, mean, I mean, Stellaris is... We're kind of getting off track here, but I don't care. I will just squeeze this fine. in. So, people so, Stellaris, this so Stellaris <laughs> is a real-time 4X strategy hybrid, and this Master is Ryan is turn-based 4X sort of traditional space you know, strategy game. So yeah, it's also smaller scale. Yeah. It's smaller scale by yeah. default. Every like normal map size in Master of Orion is like tiny, tiny, tiny map size in Stellaris. Like it, it's just right. the I'm scale playing, is my so new, different. my new LP for Stellaris. I'm on, I'm playing on a small map right? and it's, and it's 400 stars. Right. I mean, it's just like mind blowing. Yeah. Um, but to your point now, I mean, for what you were saying a second ago about getting off track for those of you who might be sitting, listening to this going, well, why are you talking about a game called Stellaris? I'm not sorry. I'm not going to. It's it's actually a serious question, so I'm not going to use a mocking voice. But for those of you wondering, are you talking about a, uh, about Stellaris and a Master of Orion recap? I mean, these are games that are compared a lot. And they also, you know, Stellaris just came out. Master of Orion is just about to come out. And, you know, Master of Orion was an early access for a lot of time that Stellaris was in development. So there's been a lot of side by side comparison. So um, this is a conversation that you'll, if you haven't run into, run into it yet on social media, or especially if you're a Reddit user, believe me, you will. People ask all the time, what should I play? Should I play Master of Orion? Should I play Stellaris? Yeah, what are the key differences? We, should probably, like we actually should probably do a video just about that. Let's do it. Let's we do should. it. That's actually because a really good question idea. comes up all the time. I get asked, like, well, which game should I buy? And I'm like, honestly, both. And yes. it really depends on your play style. I mean, yes. I enjoy both games um, quite a bit. I, th- I think they're both great for different reasons. So, I'm so glad you're saying both and you not know? both. Yeah. So <laughs> just, uh, you know, just my thoughts on that. Uh, I was watching a YouTube video the other day and the guy kept saying both. Both. Bo- and I was, I was like, oh, my God, stop. I'm not going to say who it was because he's a big YouTuber and I love him. But <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, nails on chalkboard. Anyway, sorry. That is what you call a sidetrack. Tandem. There you go. All right. It's a track and it is on the side and it's provided by Hadrian. <laughs> okay. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. And we need to stop before people just run away screaming from this. All right, folks. Well, we will continue to cover things and Hadrian and I are going to continue to collaborate, whether, whether it be more Master of Orion or something else. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll know when we know, but I think that there's still plans yeah. in the works there. So we appreciate all of the support. Um, a lot of you even have watched these videos on both channels, which is great. We, we, which we, is we, amazing. Thank it's you. awesome. It is. We would really appreciate it, too, if you'd hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this discussion and leave a comment below. Adrian, anything else for the folks? Uh, nothing really. They know comments are always welcome on both channels for me. I mean, I might hang out a little bit more talking to people on yours because you get the you get the bulk of the comments right now. <laughs> and I'm trying not to be sad about it. But it's uh, no, it's it's awesome. And uh, as long as we get uh, feedback where we can continue to interact with you guys and put out this awesome, uh, you know, kind of interactive content not only with each other but with you guys we're going to keep doing so thanks so much for all the comments so far all the all the support as mal said and we'll see you next video